In our early study of international trade, it might seem like everyone is made better off from free trade. This is, of course, a surprising conclusion to anyone who lives in the real world. In fact, many people worry a great deal about international trade costing either job losses or lower wages. They worry about international trade making them worse off. These worries are not unjustified. The media is constantly reporting on firms and entire industries that are negatively affected by competition from foreign firms that are able to produce the same good at a lower price. In addition, domestic industries and firms often decide to relocate to countries that have lower cost of production, only to turn around and export their good back to the United States. In both cases, we would expect a loss of employment opportunities domestically or, at the very least, lower wages due to the competition or the threat of relocation. Now, an economist or a politician that favors international trade might reasonably counter that imports from foreign countries will result in an increase in exports. In fact, if we assume zero net foreign investment, then the value of imports must be equal to the value of exports. It's an accounting thing. And the implication is that all the workers who lose their jobs in import competing industries will be able to find new employment in the expanding exporting industries. In addition, as the nation specializes in the production that reflects our comparative advantage, Average productivity will increase, leading to higher average wages. So in the long run, when assuming perfect factor mobility across industries, all people will once again benefit from trade. But again, this story does not accurately reflect the real world. And given that the fears of international trade's negative implications are real, what are the main contributors to these income distributional effects from international trade? Well, as it turns out, there are two explanations for why international trade leads to both winners and losers. First of all, there is limited factor mobility across industries. This means that if a worker making carpets in North Carolina loses her job, it is not reasonable to argue that she should just move to California and get into the high-tech industries. Thus, international trade may very well expand the software industry while contracting the carpet-making industry, but winners and losers from that shift will not be the same person. Another reason for the change in distribution of income resulting from international trade is the fact that different industries use factors of production in different proportions. This means that contracting industries might be labor intensive, while the expanding industries might be capital intensive, which means that as workers are laid off from the contracting labor intensive industries, they are not needed in the capital intensive exporting industries. And this loss in demand for workers or labor will lo uh, lead to lower wages, while the increase in demand for capital will lead to higher returns to capital owners. So what we see is that limited factor mobility and different relative use of factors of production will lead to both winners and losers from international trade's inevitable structural change in the industrial composition of a country. In short, international trade will result in a loss of import competing industries, while at the same time exporting industries will expand. If your skill set is such that you are unable to move from a contracting industry to an expanding industry, you will be made worse off. Similarly, if the expanding industry simply does not need your skill set, such as manual work, labor or being able to do DVD repairs or making shoes or any number of skills that we might be uh, thinking about, then you will be made worse off. 
Again, in the long run, we can argue that our children or, or our grandchildren will choose to learn and specialize in expanding industries, and therefore they will eventually be among the winners from international trade. This is, however, not much comfort to the person who just lost their job or saw their income drastically reduced. To conclude, even if we agree that the net effect of international trade is beneficial, we must recognize that these benefits imply that some groups of people will be worse off in our country. And this realization then prompts the next question, what should we do about it?